Well, hello friends. Welcome to the Serenity OS update for December 2023. Uh, it's been a lovely month in the project. We've had about 900 something commits and uh, it's been all over the place, although most of it has been uh, browser related code. So um, that stuff was already covered yesterday in the Ladybird browser update. So check that out. But we have also seen some development that was only in Serenity OS itself. So uh, I just thought I would do a quick update video here to talk about some of the new things that are pretty cool. Um, my favorite one is, I, I got a lot of invisible ones today, but uh, my favorite one I think is that we finally have uh, KSAN or kernel address sanitizer. So um, this means that we're now, we're now able to build and run our kernel with instrumentation code compiled in uh, that will catch all kinds of memory errors, uh, just like we've had address sanitizer support in user land code for a very long time. We can now run the kernel in this mode as well. And uh, there is actually a toggle here in syskernel conf called ksan is deadly. And I think it's default one. Yeah, so it's deadly by default. Um, you can switch it so that it, uh, a ksan violation does not panic the kernel if you want to be able to see <laughs> what happens after. But uh, this is going to be really, really useful in actually debugging um, memory errors in the kernel. And uh, we've had kernel oobsan already for a long time, but ksan was harder to implement. A bunch of people have contributed work towards ksan over the years, but uh, in the end, it was Idan who this month uh, did the actual final stuff to make it work. So thank you very much, Idan, for getting us ksan and i'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of bugs we can find with it uh, probably going to find some security bugs uh, that would be very interesting um, and Idan has actually been a little bit on fire this month with uh, kernel stuff so he also implemented uh, some tcp stuff so tcp window size scaling is now implemented uh, there are a couple of other things missing, but uh, Windows size scaling, I know, was one of the missing components um, before we were going to be able to actually saturate a uh, high bandwidth TCP connection. So uh, really nice that we have that piece in place. Um, he also implemented SO broadcast, the um, socket option. And uh, not only that, but also he's been... Um, weaning more syscalls off of the big process lock. So uh, we've had this refactoring ongoing for years now where uh, we're trying to get syscalls to stop using the big process lock that serializes syscalls. <laughs> um, it, was a, it was an early uh, poor design choice um, that uh, we've been trying to get away from so that we can have better throughput uh, in, in multi-threading scenarios. I think now we have 21 syscalls remaining that use the big process lock. So uh, it, it is looking like 2024 might be the year when we finally get rid of the big big lock in the kernel. Uh, but thank you, Edan, so much for, for all your work on the kernel. And uh, something I guess I can kind of show you in the kernel as well is that uh, we now have the beginnings of EHCI support. So if I just grab for it in the kernel log, we can see here uh, EHCI is the uh, controller for USB 2. So uh, we now have sort of the early stages of a USB 2 uh, device driver. And I think right now it only detects and interrogates the hardware. So it, it doesn't actually allow us to, to use devices yet. But uh, nevertheless, this is interesting initial work. So this was done by Leon. So thank you, Leon, for making progress on EHCI. Uh, and something that I definitely can't show you here because I am on X, um, x86-64 is uh, there's also progress on the RISC-V version. And I think, I'm not sure if it, it's able to run the GUI yet, but I've seen uh, improvements to backtraces and crash handling and stuff like that. And uh, Sunke has continued to work on RISC-V and... Uh, Pretty interesting to see um, more architectures being added to our system uh, because we now have 
uh, x86-64 as the mature port, uh, and then we have ARH-64 as um, sort of, I guess, the me medium mature, and then risk v coming in hot with new developments. So anyways, thank you, Senka, for working on risk v um, And then just so that we look at something visual, at least, I know that in Pixel Paint this month, uh, Torsten has added this new mechanism here called a dynamic widget container. And it's essentially uh, allows us to pop out these uh, panels here on the right and pop them back in by closing them. So it's kind of like dockable uh, widgets that can become windows or they can go back to being dockable or, or docked. And um, it's we're going to need to do a little bit more work on the sort of the ergonomics of it because um, because it would be nice if you could like drag it back in place and stuff like that. It would feel a bit more intuitive. But um, just to have the basic architecture in place that allows us to transition between a widget um, and a standalone window hosting that widget is, is really cool. So thank you, Torsten, for working on these dynamic widget containers. Um, they are pretty neat. And then there's been so much work on uh, image formats. I've seen a bunch of TIFF format stuff by Lucas. Uh, there's been JPEG color profile stuff from Nico, uh, more ICC profile stuff from Nico. I saw we had some tidy VG uh, security fixes, I think, found by the OSS fuzz project, which is continuously fuzzing some of our code base. And those were done by Tim Ledbetter. And um, there's a ton of stuff on PDFs as well. Um, crash fixes and color profile fixes for PDFs. And Nico has been just working hard on our PDF coverage. And um, he has this multi-gigabyte test suite that I, I don't have here locally. But uh, yeah, there's there's been a lot of kernel stuff, a lot of format support stuff, and um, dynamic widget containers. And then there is a new feature that <laughs> I'm not going to not gonna uh, try to demo now, but um, I know that somebody, um, I forget who it was, but some, some very, very nice person um, made it so that once you've played solitaire to the point where the game is uh, winnable, then it, you can automatically solve so you don't have to like sit and manually solve once once the game is provably winnable so that is really nice because it is a little bit tedious to sit here and <laughs> drag everything to its final place before you actually win but yeah i'm not i'm not going to demo that now because i tend to lose a couple of times before i win uh anyways this was a very quick update but i still wanted to give credit to um the people who have been working on it and um, thank everyone for their nice work. Thank everyone for 2023. It's been a great year. Uh, so much fun to work with all of you and uh, really excited about the future. So uh, I guess thank you everyone for working on Serenity OS, for watching the videos, for uh, commenting and supporting um, supporting me financially and uh, for everything else uh, thank you it's been a great year happy new one happy, happy new year happy 2024 <laughs> and i uh, will see you all in the next one bye